fisherman passing the mountains of Utah. This giant locomotive can easily climb them all. Over land through Green River, Chandelier and me. Big boy going down the tracks, a real sight to see. a king of the rails who came to life in a fusion of steam and steel. He proclaimed his presence with a rhythmic cough and a throaty cry, belching smoke and trailing steam. He pounded through his domain with a flashing and spinning of rods and wheels. His was an awesome majesty, but he was the last of his line to be toppled by new monarchs of the track. In the 18 years that the big boys reigned, they ran up a total of nearly 26 million miles, hauling billions of tons of freight as prime movers along our wartime lifeline, later carrying the goods of peace and a rising economy. During his final years, Big Boy made his last stand on a short but busy section of our main line, tough, demanding Sherman Hill. And then it was only during the annual fall rush, a few weeks a year. Even as the last wisps of steam were vanishing from railroadings yesterday, Big Boy's successors were ushering in a speed and space hungry era. He gave way as electronics, jet power, and the atom were put to work on the iron trail. So Big Boy marked the end of big steam railroading in the West. He was not abandoned because he failed at what he was designed to do but because a more efficient breed of iron horse appeared in the evolution of railroad locomotives. The vital link between east and west that was forged with steam engines is made even stronger today with modern motive power. The day has no end for the railroad, but whatever locomotive progress shall put at the head of tomorrow's train, the rumble and roar of Big Boy will seem still to echo from the high country of southern Wyoming.